Statistics and Excel, binomial distribution, standard deviation of sample means or standard error. Get ready and some coffee, because if we want to get futuristic, we need statistics and Excel. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay, because we'll basically build this from a blank worksheet. But if you first, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one. Because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like this CPA thinking cap, for example. CPA thinking CAP, you see what we did with like with the letters? And this CPA thinking cap is not just for CPAs either. Anyone can and should have at least one, possibly multiple, CPA thinking caps. Why? Because based on our scientific survey of five people, all of whom directly profit from the sale of these CPA thinking caps, wearing this CPA thinking cap, without a doubt, according to the survey, increases accounting productivity tenfold. Yeah, at least! Yeah, apparently the hat actually channels like accounting energy from the quantum field ether directly into your head, allowing you to navigate spreadsheets faster. It's kind of like how in like the Matrix when Neo learns Kung Fu, or at least that's what the scientific survey's saying. So get one, because the scientific survey participants could really use some extra cash. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Do you have access? There are three tabs down below. Example, practice blank. Example, in essence, the answer key. Practice tab having pre-formatted cells so you can practice the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The blank tab, the one we will be working on, as you can see, is blank. We'll construct this from a blank work sheet practicing our excel tools as we build it let's go to the example tab to get an idea of what we will be constructing this time looking at a binomial type of situation which often comes up it's where we have just the two choices the two different outcomes we will look here at a heads and tails type of situation but if you had a poll for an election of just two people, then the answers are just going to be one or the other. So that would be a binomial type of situation. Or when you have surveys asking something like, do you like it or you do you not like it? There's two outcomes to that particular survey. If we were looking at data that could have multiple different outcomes, such as looking at the average height of a person, for example, we can treat that a little bit differently than if we have a binomial type of situation where there's only two outcomes. Do you like it or do you not like it? Or in our case, is it gonna be heads or tails in a coin flip type of scenario? Now note, remember when we're thinking about some of these coin flip type of situations, we can kind of imagine that the entire population is in essence an infinite number of coin flips. What would happen in an infinite basically population of coin flips? And then we're gonna be testing that out by doing some kind of finite sampling, flipping the coin some type of finite amount of times. And we might be testing as to whether, for example, the coin is gonna be fair or not fair, the way we typically do that is we're gonna make a judgment up front, possibly assuming that the coin is fair. Clearly, usually that would be the case. Remember that if you found the coin like in a magic shop or something, that might not be the presumption that you would have or you'd be much more skeptical about that particular per, uh, assumption. And then we could test it by basically flipping the coin, right? So to do this, we're going to be saying that the heads is going to be represented by a zero, tails represented by a one, so that we can both map it out here and graph it, and then we can also apply our statistical calculations with it. If we think about it from a null hypothesis, statistical uh, hypothesis standpoint, our hypothesis is going to be that it's even 50-50 outcomes, and the alternative would typically be that it is not, and so we would be assuming it is which we might write this way h sub zero is that the average is going to be 50. Uh, the alternative is going to be that the average is not 
50% uh, outcome. If we were to graph this, you just got the two bars here in our histogram, and that's why it's useful to make one of the outcomes the uh, a number one versus the zero because the ratio of the two is what we're going to be looking is is what we can basically break down the binomial distribution into in essence a ratio of uh, one or the other we'll run samples and then we'll take the the mean of the samples in a similar way as we did before when we were not looking at a binomial type of distribution we'll make our, our graph of it We'll take a look at our formula here, and then we'll make another example making an uneven coin and seeing how we can map that out. All right, let's go to the practice tab, noting that we have pre-formatted cells. So if you want to practice this with less Excel formatting, you can follow along with that. But we're going to go to the blank tab and build this whole thing from scratch, from nothing. Here we go. So we're going to select the entire worksheet up top. I'm going to right click on it as we typically do in laying down the foundation, the baseline like the bass beat if you're making a music mix or something this is this is the the base the baseline we're going to then make uh, zero decimals and negative numbers currency i'm going to say okay that's our typical starting point i'm going to make it bold home tab font group make it bold you don't have to do that but being bold when recording binomial it could be useful i think i did i spell that right i think that's how you spell binomial Let's check that out. We'll say review check binomial. I think it's okay. I'm going to make that black and white for our header. So I'll select those items fonts group and I'll just make that black and white. That's the only header I'll put up top. Then I'm going to say that we have a coin flip. We're going to say that the heads, which could be represented with an H, but we're going to represent it with the number zero. So heads going to be zero for us. And then the tails of our coin flip are going to be t you can represent it as or a number one so if it comes up of a one we're going to call that tails if it comes up as zero we're going to basically call that heads so the null hypothesis which you could write as h uh, h sub zero and null hypothesis and I'm going to make that sub zero of subtext. So the way you do that, one way you can do that at least is you select it, double click on the cell, select it, right click, and then format the cell and make it a subscript. So we're going to make it a subscript and then boom, bam. And then I can copy that down. It widens the cell a little bit. And then I'm just going to change. Well, let me pull this down. I'm going to pull this down. And the null hypothesis is that the percent T which is tails is going to be 0.5%, 50%. So that's going to be our estimate. I'm going to go home tab, number group, percentify it. There we go. Let's pull this up a bit. And then the alternative hypothesis is the percent test, uh, percent test is not, otherwise sometimes represented as that, not uh, 50%. So that's going to be the alternative. We'll make that a percent. And there we have it. Let's make this a black and white header. Black, white. Let's make this black and white header. Black, white. Let's make these border blue. Font group. We're going to hit the drop down. If you don't have that blue, I go to this blue, the nice calm blue uh, standard. We're going to go to this blue here. So it's nice and calming. So everybody doesn't get all stressed out or anything. It's like the calm blue ocean. If you're getting stressed out, it doesn't make sense. Just keep repeating calm blue ocean. Count to 10 a hundred times and then come back to the presentation. Push pause and do that and then come back. Okay, so then we can also write that this way. I could say, let's make this a skinny. Let's make this uh, a skinny. And then I could say that it's going to be like the H sub O is going to be uh, sub O is going to be colon. Where's my, where's that? And then it's going to be a mu. I'm going to add the, the, the mu, which is at the home tab and I'm sorry, insert symbols. And then I already have my Greek symbols here, but I'm in the Greek Coptic symbols. And then if you do this a lot, you'll have your mu down here. So I'm going to insert that. And then boom, there it is. I'm going to say close it and enter. 
and then I'm gonna go back on it and make that zero a sub zero again selecting it right clicking on that selected that just selecting that one thing format it subscript subscript all right and then I'm gonna copy that so I don't have to do that subscript thing again and paste it here and make this subscript a alternative so then we're gonna say this is gonna be equal to enter and this is going to be not equal to 0.5 and 0.5 and so i'm going to say home tab 50 percent so this is just and i'm going to center this another way you can write this and i'll make this a little smaller just another way you can write this hypothesis test in kind of shorthand hypothesis h sub zero is that mu the mean equals 50 percent the alternative is that mu the mean does not equal 50 percent notice we have to have an equal and the greater or lesses so that we make sure to include everything all right home tab font group black white okay let's make this a skinny i'm going to make another skinny selecting this skinny home tab format painter making another skinny over here and then we're going to do our our uh, samples so I'm gonna say that uh, we're gonna have our sample one. Let's do it this way. This is gonna be uh, S and I'm gonna say one, S1. And I'm gonna put my samples going going out, out to the right this time. So I'm gonna say number, how many do we want in the sample? One, two, this will make sense hopefully that, that why I'm not going down, I'm doing the box the other way that we did before. The samples are going to the right and the n the number of items in the sample i'm going to copy over to i'm going to think i'm going to say 30 that i want in there so it's copied over to like 30 boom okay is that how is that how many i want here 30 that's what i want so then let's select all of these and make them a little thinner so these are too wide these are too wide go on a diet how dare you say the cells are too wide okay i'm just saying we need to fit it on every people can't see everything if the cells are too wide home tab font group let's make this black white and then center it and then we'll make this black and then white okay and then i'll do a random generation so we'll, we'll simulate our sample data as though we're flipping a coin now equals rand between and the outcomes are just going to be heads or tails which we're now represented by zero at the bottom comma one so those are going to be the outcomes zeros heads one is tails enter and there we have it i can copy that to the right it'll keep on shuffling it out we'll copy it to the right boom so there's my heads uh, and tails so that looks good so then i'm going to go back on over and say all right so so then let's think about our count of heads let's think about how many heads uh we've gotten here so i'm gonna say then uh we can count the heads so i'm gonna say this equals one way to do it is to say count if i want to count if this range control shift that way then i'm going to scroll back i want you to count that range uh comma if the criteria has heads was zero which i could select this zero for if it has that zero and then enter so there's 18 of them and then the second one i want to say count uh count tails and i could do it this way equals the count if tab and select all this control shift to the right boom and then comma if it has a criteria of one and then enter and it keeps on shifting that's okay i'm going to say the total the total then of this one trial of 30 is going to be equal to the sum of these two so we get 30. now i can think about it that way and i can also think about it in terms of percentages so i can say what's the percent outcome of each of them it's going to keep shuffling but it's 16 over 30 
F4 so I can copy it down, making it absolute. 16 is going to move to 14, but the 30 will remain the same. Put our cursor on it. Home tab, number group, percentify to recognize, and then add some decimals possibly, making this a little wider to recognize those, and then copy it down. And then I can sum it up. I'll say Alt equals to sum it up, copy it down, sum it up, percentify to recognize, and then add some decimals and make that a little bit larger. So there we have it. Put some underline, home tab, font group, underline. Put some border blue around them and border blue. Oh, wait a sec, K pos O. We're gonna make that blue, not black. I can't see black on black for crying out loud. All right, so there we have that. So that's if we had the, 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 the one uh, sample. Now, we can also see this in terms of a histogram, by the way, if I select all of this, control shift to the right, and then I made like a histogram by just going to insert, and then we go to the charts and just make a good old histogram. And, uh, or you can even make uh, a bar chart. I believe, no, I can't make a bar chart, but I have to do the histogram. We'll make a histogram, boom. And so it's only gonna have the two columns to it uh, because there's only, only things that can happen here is the one of the two. Let's right click on it and uh, add data labels. So now you've got the uh, 16 and uh, the 14, right? So there, so, and if you thought about it in a percent, it's out of 30. So you can find, so you can calculate it, you know, percent wise. I can also do the histogram on a percent side of things, but there's only two things. So we can think of it as a ratio because it's a binomial uh, type of distribution, as opposed to if we were measuring like heights, average heights or something like that. Okay, so given that, oh no undo let's now imagine so we have this binomial distribution just like we had the problem before uh which is that this isn't exactly bell shaped right so i can't really apply my concept of the bell shaped kind of distribution but could i apply the same kind of rules if i had if i imagined i took multiple uh samples and we can imagine the extreme of that taking every combination uh, of of samples, then the means of all those will tend towards uh, a a bell shaped curve, and then we can list that out with two numbers once again, which is going to be I'm going to need the mean, which I'm assuming is going to go towards this 50% if it's an even coin, and then we need the 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 standard deviation, not of the population per se, not of one sample per se but of the X bars, or you might call the P bar, the percentages, right, of all the means. So let's take a look at that. So let's, let's, make, let's make a bunch of samples. This time I'm gonna make like a, a hundred samples. So I'm gonna say S2, and then I'm gonna take those two and copy them down. I'm gonna go way down, and then I'll, I'm gonna say, okay, see, I didn't go down far enough. I wanna make a hundred of them. I'm gonna go too far so I can then go back up and delete them. So ju -ju -ju. Oh, that's my plan at least. So then I, I go up, now I can see the ones I need to delete. I'm gonna delete all the way up to like, I only want a hundred of them. See, this time I went too far. I didn't go far enough and now I went too far. That's what happens. The pendulum swings one way and then the other, and then you get, you know, you didn't go far enough and then you went crazy. So then I'll select all of these and I'm gonna right click and delete them and then shift up. Okay, boom. Let's go control shift up. And then I'm gonna select all of these. Let's make them black and white for our kind of header stuff. All right, so there's all the samples. So now I'm just gonna take this same random generation thing. I'm gonna select all of these. I can make this smaller. This is too wide. Make that small, it's too fat. I'm gonna take this to the right. How dare you? insult the column. I'm just saying sometimes it's good to have a wide column, but sometimes it's just, sometimes it's not good. So then I'm going to select all of this and then control shift down. And we'll say, this is going to be home tab font group brackets, and we'll make it blue. So now we've got multiple samples 
And so the, these are our samples. So let's get this straight, right? These are the samples going this way. And then this is the count, the number of flips that we did per sample. Remember, and you can kind of imagine that the actual population is like infinite flips in this kind of, when you were thinking this way. All right, so then I can take the mean. The, the nice thing about setting the table up this way is that instead of having to calculate the means like at the bottom, I can calculate the means on the side here. So I can take the mean or the average of all the samples. So then I'm going to say format paint this over here. And then I'll just take the average of all the samples equals the average tab, control shift right, and then shift back. So I only get the numbers enter. And then so there it is. And that's the uh, average of them, which could be represented as a decimal, or you can represent it as basically a percent, right? Because we, we have one of the binomials being a one and the other being a zero. So we're taking the average of them uh, should be around 50% if you, you know, you take the average, right? That's why we can represent the binomial as basically a percent. So then I'm going to copy that down and then boom copied it down copy that roger out and then we're going to say home tab font group let's make that blue and bordered all right given that information now we can take the mean of the means so let's make this smaller and let's pull over our information over here just so we have it on this side so i can see everything so we had uh the the Hold on a second. Well, let's, I don't need to pull anything over. Let's just call it this. We're going to say this is the mean of the means. So we're not taking the mean of one sample here. We're taking the mean of everything, right? Of all the means. So we took all the means and now we're taking the mean of the means. So this is going to be equal to the, and you might call this P bar because they're in percentage forms or we called it X bar before, right? So, and then we're going to say this is going to be the average tab, control shift down and enter. And so we're going to say home tab number percentify, add some decimals. Now you could take the mean of sample one, for example. Uh, well, we already did that over here, right? So the mean of each sample is tending towards 50% is what we would expect if that was the actual mean of the population, which it would be if it was a fair coin. We would expect the mean of all the means to be closer to that point. I think that's somewhat intuitive to most people. It's the standard deviation that often kind of gets a little bit, uh, a little bit more confusing to people, right? So if I take the standard deviation STD of the sample of means now, so basically, I'm going to take the standard deviation of these items. This equals the STD of the sample of these. So there we have it. Now we have adding this up. Uh, let's just do it in decimal format. So 0 0.09. Now, if I took this standard deviation STD of a sample of uh, P1 or S1 was the sample, this equals the STD of the sample. I'm just going to take that of the sample just to recognize that those are two different things. We have the standard deviation of the entire population, which we can't take because in our case, we're imagining it to be basically infinite. We've got the standard deviation of possibly a sample, which we can take, but not, isn't exactly what we're looking for because what we want is the standard deviation of the means, which you could call X bar or possibly P bar or standard error uh, possibly, because that is, is the, the mean that's gonna give us that bell-shaped curve with the middle point over here that we can then use to make approximations with. All right, so, so now let's say we're gonna make, let's make basically that bell-shaped curve now. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna have standard deviation. So S, uh, T, D, so for the size is going to be four standard deviations. So I'm going to I'm going to put my my X's to be able to build the curve. Now building this is a little bit kind of trickier because now we're really kind of talking in percents. 
So it can get a little bit confusing when you're thinking about the binomial distributions, but it still you know, might be useful to build you know, your curve from it. So let's take a look at that. So I'm gonna say the lower X, or you might call it the lower you know, P or the per or you know, because it's in a percent, this is gonna be equal to the mean, the middle point, and let's just say that it's about 50 because this is going to keep changing. So, well, let's pick it up. I'll say that's going to be this. And then we're going to say uh, minus the standard deviation. I want this standard deviation of the means minus this times four standard deviations, which is going to give me most almost all of the data on the low end. So I'm going to add some decimals to that. To, to, we can let's percentify it, and then add some decimals, and then I'm going to say on the high x, or and we're going to say this is going to be equal to the mean plus the standard deviation times four, and let's go ahead and format paint that here, and so there there's going to be our upper and uh, lower. So now I'm gonna make a skinny. So I'm gonna take this and say, give me the skinny here and put the skinny there. And let's see if we can graph this out. So I'm gonna call it X. I'm gonna call it P of X. And you might call the X, you know, P's because it's the in percentage format, but I'll keep the same. I'll make it blue, I'll make it black and white. And then I'm gonna be using then the X's that we're going to be listing out. I'm gonna start around, let's just, type it out this time, which is going to be the point one. I want to go from point one, adding some decimals, or you could make it, you know, we're looking at percents, you could make it a percent. And I could use a sequence function, but I'm just going to try to say point one, one, and I'm going to go up by unit, those units, and I'll select those two. And I just want to go up, up to around 88, right? So I'm going to take this up to around 88 shouldn't be too far up so do, do, right do, 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 do. we'll go right there and then we'll do our norm.dist calculation equals norm.dist has our x's there's our x's comma the mean is going to be that middle point which is going to keep on shifting but i'm going to be okay with that right now and i'm going to say f4 in the keyboard so i can copy that down dollar sign before the letter and the number comma the standard deviation we want to pick that one up F4 on the keyboard to make it uh, static and then comma. I want to put a zero because I don't want it to be cumulative. Close it up, enter, percentify it to recognize, percentify to recognize, add some decimals, and then let's drop it down, double clicking on it, boom, drop it down. And it adds up to, now this is where it gets a little bit wonky because it adds up to like, uh, you know, almost 10, 100 thousand and I'd like it to be like a hundred percent which makes the most sense to me so I'm going to do something that's a, so to make it a hundred percent you could you know multiply these times a hundred right to represent them uh as a as a as a number in, that would be you can consider a percent but I'm going to go over here the other way I could do it is I'm going to take this whole thing and divide it by a hundred and then you might not need to do that. It's, it's probably not necessary. We're gonna double click it down because that gives it to me in, in around 100%. Now, again, I'm, mo I'm mainly concerned when I draw the picture of having a nice bell-shaped curve and then looking at the X's because I'm assuming the curve is gonna be 100% and I'm looking on these types of problems typically uh, where the, the X's lie. So, in any case, that's the way I'm going to do it. I'm going to say control shift down, control backspace, and then I'll practice entering my graphs. Remember that you could enter the graphs many ways. You could enter just a bar graph, and that might be the easiest thing to do sometimes. And you can just say, okay, now I'm going to draw my picture and try to figure things out with just this graph, but I need to change the X axis, go into the data, and then go into the this one and change my X's, change my X's. I got to get out of Texas so I can change my X's. Sorry, that's a song. I'm going to say, okay, so there it is. So that might be useful. The other way you can do it is you could, uh, uh, we could say, we could say, take this whole thing, control shift backspace, and then insert and add a line chart. 
So sometimes that might be the way to do it. If you want to have multiple charts on top of each other, we still need to change the X's. Control shift down, control backspace. Going to select this and go back on over here. And there it is. So now my X's are lined up. But the area plot is, is the one is is the one that you want to do when you want to get detailed right typically so now i'm going to shift down the whole thing and do the area one which is going to be insert charts and let's add more charts and let's do the all charts and add the area chart boom so now we have the area one similar kind of concept we still need to go to the data edit it and pick up the x's do do do, do. No, I don't want to see the X's. I don't, you have to deal with the X's sometimes. And then we're going to say, okay. And then, and then we could add uh, the more detail of the Z scores. If we wanted to do that, to have, to have it represented uh, in Z's. So I could say, let's have it represented in Z score, right? So I could say, uh, let's paintbrush this over here. The Z is calculated by taking so this would be measuring it in standard deviations in essence we would take each individual x minus the middle point which is going to be the mean close that up and then divide it by the standard deviation and then enter what is happening what is happening right now something got totally messed up do it over do it over what in the world Okay, this equals brackets x minus this, close it up, divided by the standard deviation, enter. All right, now I need to change it so that this one, these two are outside of our table, need to be, need to be absolute reference. So F4 on the keyboard, this one F4 on the keyboard, enter, then add some decimals, number group, decimalizing it so we can see it and then double clicking it to bring it down. So now we're representing these numbers in terms of the Z score, the standard deviations. And then to add that bottom bit, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say two standard deviations on the top and the bottom, which is kind of like the default to see where those tails are at. Two standard deviations out, which adds like 95% of the data in the middle. So I'm gonna say that this needs to be a Z that's under that amount. Uh, uh, something weird happened again. So I'm going to put this little thing so I can then type in and it doesn't make it a formula. Negative two less than Z has got to be uh, less than positive two. So the Z needs to be between negative two and two. Let's make that black, white, centered. And then I'm going to do my logic test equals if brackets there's going to be two logic tests so i'm going to embed an and tab we want to say if this number which is the z if that number is uh less than it has to be uh we'll say greater than it's got to be greater than negative two that's the first test and then comma second test that number has to be less than uh it has to be less than positive two close up the and those are the two tests i'm back to the if function comma what do you want to do if that's true i want you to pick up not the z but the p of x and then comma what if it's not true then i want you to leave it blank by putting a blank i put a quote space quotes that'll put a blank close it up enter nothing's there but i'm going to click on it and drop it down number group percentify add some decimals oh that's the wrong one to do and then let's see if it, so there it is. So there they are. So it looks like it did it between the two. So that looks correct. Okay, so let's go back up. And then I'm just gonna add that over here. So now I wanna say, I'm gonna add in my data, I want another data adding the data of this one. And the data is gonna be this outer column, control shift down, control backspace. And then I'm gonna click here and then back on it so I can see it populated. That's gonna be the orange in the middle. I'm gonna double click on the orange. I know I'm doing this fast, but we've seen this multiple times. I'm just gonna keep practicing doing these because I think it's helpful. 
I'm going to close that up. I'm going to delete this thing on the end. And then I'm going to go to the plus and I want to see my, uh, uh, well, wait a sec. Then I have to go back on the data and then I want to go to the second one and edit so that I can add the Z's on the bottom. I'm going to delete this and then add the Z's. Control shift down, control backspace, and then okay. So now we've added those and then enter. And then to see them, I have to hit the plus bar. And I want to say that there's going to be a axis, title axis. There's going to be a secondary, but well, it's on the top here. There needs to be this one axis, a secondary horizontal axis. There it is. But I want to put it at the bottom. So I'm going to click on it and then go back in here again and say I want to have more options. And then I want to make sure I'm on this one. And I'm going to put it to the bottom. Bring it to the bottom. Por favor, please. Low. Bring it down low. So there we have it. So now we have that. And remember, you can also just add your little line thing here. So then this is just a way that you can draw the picture. And, and like I say, we're mainly concerned with, we'd like to have a nice little bell shaped and we're mainly concerned with where things lie in terms of the X's and then the Z score are the two ways that we can kind of measure. And then we know because of the symmetry of the, of the curve, how much is under the curve at, at, the, at those particular, uh, uh, areas. Now, of course, we calculated the, the Z score, uh, the Z scores the, if we assumed that the mean was 50% and I got to, in this case, I took the means of the means, this number, then it's pretty, it's pretty close to the 50%. I can look at that in terms of Z scores, right? In terms of where would that be on the Z test? How close to the middle saying zero was the middle of the standard deviations. And I can say that would be equal to the same thing we calculated over here, right? It would be equal to the, this is what we calculated the mean to be minus what we expected it to be 50% do, 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 and then divided by the standard deviations, which we're using, that's the standard deviation of uh, the, all the means, right? And then I'm gonna say enter and then that's going to be, let's make this a percent. Do, do, do. So, well, wait, not a percent. Let's not make it a percent. Let's just unpercentify it and then add some decimals. So there we have it. So it's pretty close to that middle point, which is what we would expect. Now let's also calculate, I'm going to say control D, I'm going to paste this here and I'm going to make this, this is border blue. It's border blue. And this is going to be recalculating this STDs of the mean using this formula. So in practice, let's pull the formula over. I'm going to pull it over from here. Let's pull this one over. We, we might be doing a test instead of, and we might take, instead of doing multiple samples, we might be in a situation where we're doing one sample, right? And then we're trying to figure out, we're trying to figure out what this number would be, right? If I had like, if I didn't have a whole bunch of samples, then this number, as we saw before, uh, is going to be kind of tending towards as if we had every possible combination of samples, right? So because we took multiple samples, 100 samples here, this is getting closer to that, you know, hypothetical number. But if we don't have a bunch of samples, then we would need to estimate that number because the standard deviation of just one sample wouldn't get us there, right? So we have this formula, which looks a little bit different than the one we saw before, which we called X bar. This one uh, is now going to be the, the standard deviation of the P bars, which is kind of like the same thing, but with a binomial distribution. So I'm going to call it P bar, or you could call it the standard error. It has the correction factor, but I'm not going to do the correction factor, same kind of concept before as to when you might need the correction factor. So we're just going to do this bit over here and see how close it is to this number that we did by having multiple samples, although not all combinations possible of samples. So this equals the probability. Now, we're, if the probability is known, 
for the entire population, we're going to be using the 50%. If not, we might need to estimate you know, with the, with the mean, but we're going to say the probability is the 50% times 1 minus the probability over n, which is the numbers in our sample, which in our case, each sample had n of 30, 30 coin flips, in essence. We have to take the square root of that. So, okay, let's see if I can type this in. Square root, sq root of, and then I'm going to put uh, brackets around this whole thing, and then I could go all the way to the left and pick up this 50%. So 50% is going to be the P, the percent that we, uh, of, or mean, you can think of it. And then we're going to say times, and then brackets again, 1 minus that 50%. So I'm just going to say the same 50% over here. And then, and then I'm going to close that up. So that's closing up this top bit. And then I'm going to put another bracket around it, which is closing up this to here. So I can take that divided by the denominator so over the denominator of n which we had samples of 30 so i'll pull that up from here so we can see where it came from close that up and enter and let's add some decimals doot, 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 doot. and then here is our difference 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 so this is what we calculated using multiple multiple uh samples and taking the mean of all of them and which is, est is still an estimate because we're not taking all possible combinations minus what we did with the formula. And you can see because, because that relationship is predictable, the formula does a pretty good job of giving us the, the proper number. And that's the number we're going to need for the second component to make our bell curve because we need the middle point and then we need the standard deviation, not of the population, not of one sample, but of, in essence the means right as if we had all possible kind of combinations which is why we need that formula because we don't often have a whole bunch of different samples possibly all right so let's go ahead and put some brackets around this and do do it we'll do that and then we'll say it's choo, 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 making this blue and border clean it up a bit clean it up clean it up i don't like cleaning things up that's what you have to you have to clean things up sometime I'm gonna make more stuff while everything is dirty. Okay, so next time we're gonna continue on and we'll say, well, that's great if let's let's try to make up a scenario where uh, the middle point where it's off, right? Where it's not 50%, where we don't have a fair coin and we'll do that next time.